guys, it's Kira and welcome to another video. Today I'm super excited to be talking you through some of my five star predictions, aka the books from my extensive TBR that I am most excited to read. And I'm particularly excited about this because I feel like this video signifies the start of me leaving the reading slump that I've been carrying around with me for the last couple of months. I've been reading but I just haven't been feeling that motivation and desire to pick up books like I normally would. I felt like reading has been a little bit of a chore and essentially that's kind of coincided with a period of my life where I haven't been in work. I've been on furlough because of lockdown and I just felt like in general that had a massive impact on my productivity and just feeling like my life was a bit of a nothingness void of emptiness. Not to be dramatic or anything, I'm only kind of kidding, but like I did genuinely feel as though I was liking, lacking a little bit of direction and that had an impact on lots of different areas of productivity, including reading. But over the last couple of weeks, I've been back at work, thank God, and I'm loving it. And I feel like immediately being back at work and also back at the gym because the gyms are now open has just had such a marked improvement on my productivity and just motivation levels. And so I'm now feeling excited to read again. So with that in mind, I've been looking at my shelves and trying to decide which books to start first. And I've come up with a list of, I think, eight books that I think are gonna be five-star reads for me that I'm super excited to get to. And I can't wait to talk to you about all of them. But before we jump into all of those incredible books that I'm super excited to read, I wanted to let you know that today's video has been very kindly sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an absolutely wonderful online learning platform for creative and curious people that gives you the opportunity to explore learning at your own pace and just dive into a hub of total creativity that really allows your sort of inner desire to learn and develop skills that you might already have or learn completely new creative skills to just completely blossom. Not to sound cheesy but it just provides such an incredible array of classes that it is almost impossible not to find something that suits you or that tickles one of your interests and I just feel like it has such an incredible range of classes and subjects. Whether you're looking to start something completely from scratch you can search for beginner classes or you're really working up to that intermediate or advanced level you can tailor your searches to find classes to suit you and they have classes in so many different subjects ranging from topics like freelancing, design, graphic design as well as more like fine art drawing design, you've got writing, creativity boosting classes, you've got things like business development, video editing, photography and so many other things so there really is something to suit absolutely everyone. And in the spirit of trying to boost my productivity, as I've mentioned, it's been a bit lacking recently. The classes that I've been turning to have been focused on the subject of productivity. And there was one class in particular that I was super excited to come across by Tana Christensen, which was all about turning creative ideas into actions, which I just think is such an incredible class because really creativity comes naturally to some people, but the prospect of turning your creative ideas into an actual tangible project or result or goal is often really the most daunting thing and that's what puts people off of trying to explore their creativity so this class was absolutely wonderful but whether you're looking for something like productivity like i was or something completely different it's super easy to find creative classes to suit you skillshare is also super affordable with annual memberships equaling out to about ten dollars per month but i'm super happy to say that the first 1000 people to click the link in the description box down below will actually get a free trial of skillshare premium meaning that you can try it out all for yourself, see all of the incredible things that Skillshare has to offer and then like I said the annual subscription after that free trial is only about $10 per month. So a big big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and without further ado let's jump into my five star predictions. First up on the list, we have a book that I bought very recently. I bought it, so naturally I was excited to read it, but I featured it in a vlog recently, and the response to this book has made me even more excited to read it and even more convinced that it's gonna be a favorite of mine. And that book is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I don't know very much about this book, but something about the cover gives it a vibe that I just think I'm really gonna like. But don't get me wrong, I've not purchased this book purely based on the cover, nothing wrong with that, but with this one, I've heard so many 
incredible reviews. I know it's getting turned into a movie with an actress playing the main character who I absolutely love. I think the main character Kaya is being played by Daisy Edgar Jones who played Marianne in the adaptation of Normal People so I absolutely love that and I want to be able to watch it but I want to read it first. And my understanding of this book essentially focuses on the fact that it is a mystery set across quite a large timeline I think but beginning in the late 60s surrounding a girl Kaya as I just mentioned and I think a murder or at least a dead body that has been found in the marshes near where she lives and kind of all of the events following that. I don't know too much else and I don't want to because it sounds like a mysterious book. I love the cover, can't wait to watch the movie and I cannot wait to read it. I think this one is going to be incredible. Next up we have a book that I do not yet possess but I know I'm going to love. It's a new release that is actually out this week as I'm filming this video. It's coming out right at the end of April and that is The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. Beth O'Leary is the author of The Flat Share and then more recently The Switch, two books I absolutely love. Beth O'Leary is my absolute favourite romance author. She just creates romances that are dual perspective, that have so many different elements, that combine really fluffy and light-hearted just feel-good romance elements with some more serious and gritty topics and I just absolutely love her work. So I naturally uh, pre-ordered The Road Trip, a signed copy, as soon as it got announced last year and I'm so excited for it to arrive. I'm going to be reading it immediately when I get that book on my doorstep. Drop everything else read the road trip is going to be my response because I'm just so excited. As the title of that book suggests, it is about a road trip. We have a group of friends who are on the way to a mutual friend's wedding and then one of the cars that they're travelling in, so they're going in two different cars, breaks down. So then all four or maybe even five people have to get into one car and in that car are two exes basically. So we have a girl and a boy who used to go out, don't go out anymore and they essentially have to spend a load of time together in the car on the road trip. I think there's some reminiscences about their past relationship and of course maybe a little bit of a hint about why they broke up and I just think it's going to be so fun. I think that like tight closed in dynamic of being in a car is going to make for some really intriguing book. Book? Really intriguing pages? I think it's going to be a good book is what I'm trying to say and I just love Beth O'Leary so much so I can't wait to get my hands on a new copy of a new book. Well significantly less uplifting but certainly nonetheless very intriguing, the next book on my list is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ang. Now I'm going to go ahead and read the blurb of this book because it's a mystery and I always feel like mystery blurbs do a much better job of explaining them than I do especially when I've not read the book yet. So essentially we have So Begins This Exquisite Novel About a Chinese American Family Living in 1970s Small Town Ohio. Lydia is the the favourite child of Marilyn and James Lee, and her parents are determined that she will fulfil the dreams that they were unable to pursue. But when Lydia's body is found in the local lake, the delicate balancing act that has been keeping the Lee family together is destroyed, tumbling them all into chaos. Now that just sounds so intriguing because not only do we have a murder mystery, we also have this really complicated, I guess, domestic family drama slash thriller all about this family and the very, like, tight... I guess tension that's going on between them and the sort of delicate balancing act as it says in the blurb that they had of trying to sort of keep everything together and how quickly that was shattered when something devastating happened to them and that just sounds so intriguing it sounds like exactly the type of thriller or mystery that I would really really love because I love ones that focus on like domestic dramas and family circumstances and this just sounds like it's going to be very very interesting but probably quite dark as well. Next up we have quite a topical book and that is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This book is about a troupe of actors who I think are sort of travelling the world in like a post-apocalyptic environment after a virus has wiped out a significant amount of the population. So I actually got this one for my birthday last year in 2020, but I think I didn't really end up picking it up because it kind of felt as though we were kind of living in a dystopian novel at that point. Um, whereas now I'm very much excited to read it and that wasn't really the main reason that I didn't read this book, it just kind of fell to the bottom of my shelves and I didn't really take much notice of it. But now having moved I've kind of noticed it on my shelves again and I feel very intrigued and excited to read it because I love dystopians and I think this one is going to be very intriguing. Like I said, topical but with like a Shakespearean acting troupe as the like central cast of characters, it's also not going to feel too 
like on the nose about being about today's society. So I feel like it's going to strike that balance enough between sort of touching on things that are relevant and relatable, but also creating a fictional world that feels distinct and different from our own. Next up, I have another book that hasn't yet been released, but is coming out at the end of May, just after my birthday. So I think I'm definitely going to treat myself to a copy after my birthday, because that book is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And take everything that I said about Beth O'Leary and essentially apply that to Taylor Jenkins Reid as well. She combines romance and love in a really relatable and honest way with so many gritty elements as well. I'd say Taylor Jenkins Reid's romances are significantly less fluffy than Beth O'Leary's, but they they both have that combination of combining things that feel real and authentic with grit and humour and I just think that it's such a talented way to bring romances to life in a way that feels really authentic and so Malibu Rising is coming out on the 25th of May and I'm so excited to read it. I believe that this book surrounds a group of four very rich siblings in LA. And I'm pretty sure the book surrounds the events of a house party which leads to a tragic event and I think it's told from all four different siblings perspectives and kind of builds up the entire situation so you figure out what's going on. My friend Em actually got an arc of this book so she's already read it and has done a reading vlog for it so I'll link that down below if you want to go and check out her thoughts but essentially she told me that it has some slight crossover references and sort of admits to being in the same world as I think the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo which is always really fun when authors kind of play on their other works and I just think it's going to be incredible. One thing that Taylor Jenkins Reid does so well that I think she's really honed in on in her last three books has been sort of like historical fiction romances like Daisy Jones and the Six and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I believe that Malibu Rising falls into that category as well as being not quite contemporary and kind of set in a more like movie star sort of style vibe and I feel like that makes her books so much more intriguing because they're not old enough and sort of historical enough that it feels like you're reading something that's completely out of the realms of our reality but it also feels like it's kind of you're watching it through rose tinted glasses and you kind of can see the like mesmerizing and alluring world of Hollywood and I just think it's really interesting so I'm very excited to read Malibu Rising and every time I say Malibu Rising I just feel like I'm ordering a cocktail because it just sounds like the perfect name for a cocktail. I don't know if that, maybe it is one, but either way, it just sounds so exotic and fun and I can't wait to read it. And I know a lot of other people are gonna be excited for that one as well because who doesn't love Taylor Jenkins Reid? Next on my list, we have The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I feel like I talk about this book all the time and yet because of the size of it, I'm kind of apprehensive to begin, but I absolutely loved The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So I've been wanting to read this book ever since reading The Secret History and I just feel like I'm gonna love it. A lot of people have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Donna Tartt's writing style, however I loved The Secret History so I'm fairly confident that I'm gonna get on with this book. And I've also seen some other people who say that they like this more than The Secret History, other people who like it less and so I'm very much intrigued to just dive into it with an open mind and just see how I feel about this book. I believe this one is set in New York City and we follow a young boy or at least he's a young at the beginning of the novel throughout quite a long period of his life I think he loses his mother and then from there gets kind of sucked into some kind of like cult like setting which is extremely interesting love a cult not to be in one more so just to read or watch one because I feel like there's such intriguing things and it really dives into human psyche and exactly what makes people join these groups and what we gain from them and how everything goes wrong and so cults are just so intriguing to read about and I can't wait to read this one. Although I am still nervous about the size, I do think I'm going to enjoy it. And I might have to piggyback this one alongside a couple of more lighthearted romances, because one thing about um, Donna Tartt's writing style is that it's quite heavy, quite intense, very descriptive, and you really have to pay a lot of attention to it. So I think maybe I might finish like reading the Bridgerton series either before or after reading this one, just to give myself something a little bit more lighthearted and easy to get through, just to balance out the reading. Next up we have The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis. Now as you can see from the cover of this book and also just from you know existing in the 21st century you'll know that this book was turned into a Netflix adaptation last year with the wonderful Anya Taylor-Joy as the main character Beth Harmon. I watched this over Christmas and it was incredible. I absolutely loved it and I was so surprised by how much I loved it because the subject matter is essentially about a chess child prodigy and it's all about chess and chess tournaments and all that kind of stuff. I've never played chess and I have no desire to so wasn't sure how interesting I was going to find it but it was 
amazing. And so naturally, after having loved the TV show so much, I kind of wanted to return to the original material and just see like what the book is about, how much the TV show and book are different, whether I'll find it as intriguing written in book format and all of that kind of stuff. But if the book is anything like the TV show, which one would assume it would be, I think I'm going to love it because I just thought it was such an interesting story and it was so gripping and dynamic with so many different twists and turns that I just didn't expect and it brought to life something that was, like I said, kind of dull like chess in a way that makes it mesmerising and exciting which was so unexpected for me and so I'm really looking forward to seeing what the book is all about and what vibe the book gives off. And then last but not least, we have Just Like You by Nick Hornby. Now, first of all, can we just appreciate the cover of this book? The combination of the like brown with the pink and then the yellow is just such a beautiful colour palette and I am so here for it. But Nick Hornby is the author of a favourite book of mine, which is About a Boy, which was definitely a five star read. I loved it so much. And so when I saw this book in Walter Stones, I just knew that I was intrigued enough to want to pick it up. This is a book which I think focuses on an unlikely romance that is kind of seen by everyone else as doomed to fail and yet these people who are very very different from each other kind of magnetise into each other's lives and it's all about this romance that shouldn't work but maybe does but then maybe it doesn't. Who knows? I guess I'll have to read it to find out. But I just love the cover. It's absolutely gorgeous. Love the author from his other works and I just think I'm really going to like this one because I love those kind of unlikely romances or books that kind of just really hone in on two people and their connection with each other that just works no matter how unlikely it may be. That's one of my favourite things about Sally Rooney's books because she really does focus on just human connection, why it happens, when it happens and what happens after you've kind of embraced the connection and things kind of feel a little bit rocky. So I absolutely love that concept and I'm hoping that's what I'm going to get from this one and if that is the case it should be a five star read for me. And there we have it, those are just some of the incredible books on my shelves that I think I'm going to be giving five stars and that I'm most excited to read from my TBR. I'm so happy that I'm wanting to read again, that books are exciting me and that I'm feeling that motivation to pick up books once again because you know it doesn't feel like I'm me without books but there are just some times when you just need a little bit of a break. I had my break and our motivation is skyrocketing and I'm so happy about it. So without further ado if you have read any of the books that I mentioned in today's video and you definitely think that I should pick one of them up first because although I've narrowed down my TBR to like eight books I still have quite a few books to choose from so it would be rather helpful if you could give me a little nudge in the right direction of which one to pick up first and if you have any books that you think are five star reads that you think I would like as well or any books that you're looking forward to reading let me know in the comments down below as well. Thank you so so much for watching and another big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I'll see you next time.